everybody, welcome back to uh, the next Photoshop tutorial. We're going to get started today working on an idea for creating labels for products that you might have to use as set dressing on shelves. I thought I would use the idea of maybe you're doing a musical uh, production of She Loves Me, which takes place in a perfume shop, and so you've got to dress shelves with, you know, several hundred bottles of perfume. Um, but again, this, this method is going to be helpful for you for any kind of label making that you're going to want to do. Um, and again, this is a very beginner project. So if you have experience with Photoshop, you might already know how to do some of these things. So I'd say let's wait until if you want to join us later when we're not just doing basic selections and color changing and font changing, when we're doing more complicated things, um, you can join us later. Um, but of course, anybody is welcome. The first thing you're going to want to do is go to the Google Drive. Um, I'm going to go to my Google Drive. Uh, whoops, Google Drive. And on the Google Drive folder, um, it should be already on your drive. So you'd want to scroll down to where that is and um, open that file. If I can find it. Yay, there it is. Um, workshop number two has a folder in there. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and upload the files that I created for that here. So you can go ahead and get started. Um, there's a, a image that you're going to need for the um, project. So here, once I'm done you know, taping this film, you'll be able to see that here, somewhere here, I will save the YouTube video um, or a link. I'll, send it, I'll put the um, handout like I did last time, and the link to the YouTube video will be in the handout. So that's how I'll do it. I'll just keep it consistent that way. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and open Photoshop. And you can download that image to your um, computer, wherever you want to, wherever you want to, uh, save it. This is the image we're going to be using and the first thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to double click on the background layer and save it as a regular layer. So I'm going to double click there. I'm going to turn it into a regular layer. And so right now we've got the ruler showing. Again, if you want to make sure your rulers are showing, you go to view and rulers. Just a little um, review on that. Oops. And um, you can see exactly up here how large um, this uh, document is. Okay. Also, you can go to image, image size, and you can see how big the, the image is. And you're going to be wanting to size that just like we did last time with the size. You're going to want to size it to the size of your bottle that you're going to be placing it on. So you can either you know do all the stuff you want to do and then at the very end resize it. Totally up to you how you want to do it. Um, but you will want to make sure that before it's all said and done that it's the right size for you to, um, to print. Okay, So today we're going to start with thinking about selecting areas we want to change the color on or adjust the color on. And so we have to start with these tools along the side here. The ones up here um, are various selection tools. This is your move tool at the top. Okay, And when you hover over it you'll notice you get an example of what the shortcut is for that tool on your keyboard and what the tool does, which is really fantastic. Photoshop does that. Um, rectangular marquee. You'll also notice that you've got little drop down arrows next to these. And if you click on that little arrow, it changes the shape of the area that you would be selecting. So, say for example, I wanted to change, uh, I wanted to select an area in here that's a perfect rectangle. I'm not going to be doing that for what I'm going to be using the color change on, but you can just practice with that. You could take your cursor and you could draw a rectangle and then you could see you've got the marching ants. And then if you wanted to do some sort of adjustment there, like say for example, you for whatever reason you wanted to change the color of that, you can see that um, if I go to adjustments, maybe I just choose color balance and I just play around with that and sliding the top, you can see how that selected area changes. Um, Again, that's not going to be real helpful, especially if you want to choose a color on this whole thing and just the entirety of that particular color, which is what we're going to be doing. But I just wanted to show you that that's one selection tool. This tool right here is called the Magnetic Lasso. If Again, if you click over here, you get a lasso tool. 
a polygonal lasso tool, and a magnetic lasso tool. Magnetic lasso tool, all the lasso tools are selection tools that you might only use if you're just kind of roughly trying to select an area. You'll notice that you've got, the, I've got the marching ants here. If I ever want to get rid of those, if I don't want to work out, I can hit escape, I'm sorry, I can hit command D on my Mac, or I can go up to select, deselect, and that goes away. You always want to be looking at that, making sure that you're on the right layer and that you don't have marching ants somewhere and that you're trying to, you might find yourself frustrated because you're trying to select something, but actually there's some of their areas still selected. So, you, you know, hitting the command D or going up to select, deselect is always a good idea if you're, if you're having trouble making a command work because you may have just a tiny little area somewhere that's got marching ants and you can barely see it and that's why your next command isn't working. Just something to keep in mind. This tool right here is one of the tools, Magic Wand tool, is one of the tools I use most frequently for selections because most of what I'm doing in Photoshop is adjusting areas of color. Um, I want to change the color of something. I want to um, select the sky behind the clouds and make the sky look brighter. Or I want, you know, so that is going to be um, something we really want to focus on today. So if you click on the magic wand tool in that little arrow next to the magic, okay, well, it's not doing it, but um, I'm just going to use the regular magic wand tool. As soon as you click on any of these tools, you'll notice that up here at the top, along the top uh, header, the tool shows up as well. And you can define presets for the tool if you want to, but I'm just going to use the tool as it is. For what I do, it works fine. Um, Tall sample size, you're not going to have to worry about so much, um, but tolerance is something that I change a lot. If I were to select, let me just select using the magic wand tool, this area of this gold. You'll notice if I zoom in a little bit on this corner here, let's see. it didn't select at all. What it does is Magic Wand recognizes a certain average of the color. And so it can be inaccurate if you don't have um, the tolerance pretty high. If it were even lower than this, even less of this that I touched on would be selected. So let's say I choose 75 and I go back over here and I select that. Oh my goodness, look at everything. So much is being selected here. Well, maybe I just want to kind of make sure that only this frame around here is selected. Well, right now it's selected all this other stuff. So I need to hit deselect and I'm going to start over again. Okay. I'm also going to uncheck the box contiguous. Okay. If I uncheck the bo box contiguous, that means that it's not going to recognize other things that are touching it. So our, the, it will recognize all that color in the, um, I'm sorry, reverse that. It's going to recognize everything that's close to the color, regardless of whether it's touching it or not. So I'm going to deselect it. I'm going to click contiguous again, and let me go back to, since 50 didn't get it all, I'm going to say 55, and let's see what happens. Okay, so it's still pretty much, there's still that little area, and I can just go in, I can kind of click on the areas that are still not wanting to be selected. You'll notice that there are ones that are lighter. I could step back, um, but it's getting most of it. But if I'm, for me, let me put this on the screen. For me, if I wanted to change the gold in this label to something else, I'm probably going to want to change all the gold to something else. So maybe what I do is I, I deselect again and I unclick contiguous so I capture all the gold. I'm going to put it, I'll leave it at 55 since it was still having trouble over here. And really, let's see, it's got it all. It looks like it's got it all. See how I don't have any of those little areas anymore that are not being recognized? So it did a pretty good job of recognizing, even, it even recognized the um, area of gold in between these letters and this little gold thing here. So, but if you really zoom in on it, again, this is something that you're going to use for a tiny little label you're going to put on a bottle that's going to be 30 feet away. If you're a graphic designer and you're doing a poster, you're going to have to use selection tools a lot more finer. You know, a lot, let me, one more time, a lot finer. <laughs> You'll want more refinement, shall I say. 
And so I think that just, you know, keep that in mind. You've, you've got very small things you're working with and you can kind of get away with a lot. Um, and normally you're in a hurry, so you want to make sure that you're getting things done. Now, if it was something you're in a very, very intimate theater and you know it's got to be right on and people are really going to see it, again, you're going to have to take a little bit more time with that and make sure that you can um, not see your, anything weird. Okay, so I'm going to fit on the screen. So I've used my magic wand. I've selected my to or set my tolerance at 55. Um, I've made sure that there are not any little places that weren't selected. I've, I've, it looks like I've got it all. So now I can go in and I can adjust this goal. Maybe what I've decided is that it looks a little subdued and I wanted a little bit more musical theater and so I want to brighten it up or do something that's going to make it a little splashier looking. So the first thing I could do is I could go to Image, Adjust, and over here you'll notice you've got a bunch of options for how to change this. The first one, Brightness Contrast, is fantastic. You could just, honestly, you could just make it brighter. Now that kind of you know makes it look a little bit overexposed, so that might be too much. But I could just adjust it. You can see how I can adjust it, and just a little bit. Um, let's see, contrast also is something interesting. If there's less contrast, it's dull. If there's more contrast, contrast is fantastic. It's almost like putting your image through a filter on Instagram or something. It everything just gets a little bit more intensified. It's very subtle. So again, play around with those. I'm also going to go to image, again, adjustments, levels. This really, this one here, um, I don't use it a lot. Uh, I think it's great for like um, black and white pictures. Um, now you can kind of just, again, it takes a second for Photoshop to realize what you're doing. But it's going to, um, and you can adjust here things. It's going to, ooh, again, cancel that. Um, I don't really use that one a whole lot. Image adjust, again, curves and exposure. Exposure, again, it's going to make it bright. Vibrance is another fun one to use. And saturation. Notice what happens when I increase the saturation. Again, it may black out for a second because it's just Photoshop um, readjusting everything. It takes Photoshop a second to get it done. So don't get too freaked out by that. But look at how, ooh, saturation, it starts looking like really... Um, uh, almost like one of those uh, movies from the 60s where they've colorized them and they use like a really intense color. Um, vibrance, again, vibrance might be something. Look at how the red and the oranges really start to pop. So you can, again, you can play around with all of these. Now image adjust, again. Hue saturation is something too. Lightness, that's like almost like it's putting a, a filter of lightness across the whole thing. Saturation, oh, that's going to really change things. And hue, you can play around with it here if you want to. I mean, like, you really could do. But I, if I'm really going to change the color, like, specifically, I'm going to use the next one, which is color balance. And this allows you to really isolate more precisely what colors you're going to want to slide to. Because that other one is all on one bar, and it's kind of hard to control. This one is... Um, I feel like I just have a little bit more control. And it also gives you a numeric um, entry for how it's changing the color. So say, for example, you've got three different labels, and they're all kind of the, the same Art Deco style. And you wanted to adjust the colors on all of them in a kind of consistent way. You could write down what these entries were, and that's going to be really helpful um, for you to make sure that uh, they're all consistent. Okay, so let's play around with that. Let's say that that, again, the only thing it's going to be applying this adjustment to is what is currently within the marching ants. That's what we call when something is selected. You see all these little dashes marching around. The marching ants show you what you are going to be making a change to. So if something isn't selected, it's not going to change. So notice this gold area as I push it more toward red. You'll notice the colors of everything else do not change. If I push it toward blue, again, nothing else changes. So that's where you're having accurate selections. It's going to be really important. The green, this starts to look very musical theater to me. So I'm kind of liking it. Yellow, that's, that's even more chartreuse. So you can kind of, you know, make changes and um, have it be a little bit more intense, you know, if, you, if things are going to be pretty far away. So again, Play around with this and get it to where you like it. 
and then you're going to hit OK um, and then deselect. You can also take some time to play around with the selection tools um, to see how, like maybe if I wanted to get this orange area, um, that's going to be a little tricky. Um, I could just hit here and see if it'll, it's going to get all of it, it's going to capture all of it, but see there's some little areas. If I want it to be very, very uh, precise, that I just change these orange areas. Another tool you can use right here is called the pen tool. The pen tool you can draw with, but you can also make selections with. Let me show you how you do that. You're going to start, it's going to create an anchor point. And you're going to draw around. And if you want to make sure that something is a perfect parallel line, you just hit shift while you're clicking, shift and click shift and click, shift and click, and so your lines will be absolutely perpendicular. Now on angles you can't do that. And then you're going to click on the first point that you made. You'll notice a little circle appears next to the pen, and that means you're closing your path. So you'll notice you've got all of these little anchor points here. You can move those if you want, but I know that that's exactly the area that I want to deal with. So you'll notice here on your Layers palette, there's another tab that says Paths. You're going to click on Paths. And you'll notice you've got something called Work Path. And it's in the shape, a little tiny shape of what you've just drawn. So in order to make that a selection that you can then use to change, you can take that and click and drag it down to where there's a little circle that looks like marching ants. Boom. And you'll notice on your image you've got marching ants around that area. Now I always worry about making a change on my background image and then having to go back and change it later and then not being able to get my work path and all of that. So it may be a good idea to create a new layer, layer new layer, and I'm going to call this orange area. You can call it whatever you want and I'm going to click OK. Now, I want to copy the marching ant area on my original layer onto my orange area layer. So I need to activate, I need to make sure that this layer is active, and I can hit Command Copy or Edit, Copy, whatever you want to do. Then click on my orange area layer and hit Command Paste. And then I've got just this singled out on another layer that I can manipulate and not mess up my, my lower layer. Always a good thing to keep in mind. You can always flatten this lay, uh, layer later and make a, a flattened image um, or you can just link them and print them out. It doesn't matter. Um, but either way it's just a safe bet. Uh, so if what I wanted to do was manipulate just this area and not really deal with this for a second, not see it, I can just turn it off. And there, there's my isolated orange area in my new layer to play with. So I need to select this now. I go to my magic wand and I'm just going to click somewhere in this empty background area with the little checkerboard. Checkerboard shows you that that's empty. And you'll notice it selected all of this empty area around this uh, selection. But I want to select the selection. So I could just go to select inverse and now I've got my selected area that I want to manipulate active and ready to go. And I can go to image, image adjust, color balance or whatever I wanted to do. So I wanted to put it more toward magenta, whatever. I'm just kind of showing you some things you could do. And then I want to see what it looks like on top of the um, older one. Oh, okay. Well that's what it looks like. Um, it's covering this orange area here with the marching ants on its own layer is covering up what's underneath. If I turn this off, then I'm back to what it was before. So you can kind of click that little eyeball and turn it on and off and see if you like it. Okay. So again, you're going to, let's do it again. Let's go back to our original layer. We go to our pen tool. I'm going to do down here. Select, select select and you can continue to make selections because I oops yeah there we go and then I want to make sure that I've got this whole area too you'll notice that the anchor points went away on the one that I just did but it's still got a line around it so that's just we're cool and then we're going to go to paths 
and you'll see those two little chunks that work past. I drag it into a selection. They're both selected layers. I'm going to copy them from this layer to my orange areas layer. Oh, and it made it its own layer. That's fine. I'll call it orange. I just double click there. And <laughs> orange area number two. And so now I would do the same thing. And I don't even have to turn off my other layers. What I would do is I would go here to and um, see how you can, you've got the marching ants around those two little bottom pieces there. But I need to select the inverse, right? Because I just want those two little areas selected. Image, adjust, color balance. And again, I could have written down that magenta number from the other one so I could do them exactly the same way. And then I would hit OK. And then I could hit deselect. And then again, I could turn off that area and turn it back on. And I've got the color changed. So again, play around. Maybe what you can do is you can get the magic wand and you can make sure that you've got the background layer um, engaged. Because again, if you're trying to select something over here on these other two areas, it's only going to select those two areas that are in that layer. So you want to, you know, say you want to adjust the green, you need to be on that original layer to do that. And again, I've got it on, I don't have it on contiguous. Let's look at that again. Um, so it wasn't clicked. The, che the checkbox was not, the check. The box was not checked, rather. So I've got my magic uh, wand. I click, and so all of that color in the entire design is selected. If I click the contigu contiguous box, it's only going to select whatever is touching. See, even this little green area in here, it wasn't touching this area. So it's not selected. So that's where, you know, having this box unchecked is sometimes really helpful if you're trying to make a change to a tone of color in the entire design. Play around with that, see how you like that. Um, so now let's talk a little bit, moving, um, switching gears and talking a little bit about font. I know that in She Loves Me, the name of the store is Marichex. Let me just go in and do um, She Loves Me perfume store name and just check the spelling I don't want to spell it wrong I feel really silly but for whatever reason my internet is slow so I'm going to go back and I'm going to wait for that to I'm not sure why it's doing it anyway so I'm going to go back here and I'm going to start dealing with um, my text. So I'm going to put Marichex um, on there. Lee, could you could you could you find out what Marich how to spell Marichex for me? Um, Lee's going to do that. So I'm going to do this um, and text. This is the text tool, but I want to make sure that my text is on its own layer. So I'm going to do I'm going to go up to Orange Area Two and I'm going to make sure my next layer is above that new layer. I'm going to call this one text. Okay. And you'll notice that you can also move layers around. So you can put the text behind this orange area if you wanted to. Again, that's just, it's, you imagine you've got sheets of paper and one is on top of another. And if you've got something that's hidden or behind something, just move it up. Because the one that's on top is going to be the one that you're going to see. Okie dokie. So I've got my text layer and I've got my text tool decided. And... <laughs> it's she loves me. Um, she loves me. So um, I'm going to decide, maybe I want to have Mara checks here, but then this little thing is in the way, so I can maybe deal with that here in a minute. But I'm going to set my text tool right here. And it's going to default to the last type of font that I used, So and how big it was. So I'm going to go up here to the top line, and here are all of my fonts. And you can go to a Google search and look for free Photoshop fonts if you've got a specific font you want to use. And you can download them, go through the step-by-step, -step, and then you restart your computer. And then the next time you open Photoshop, your fonts that you've downloaded will show up here in this list. It's really wonderful. Super easy. So I want something that's kind of um, easy to read, but uh, maybe looks sort of like a, um, it's cursive. Script. So... 
I'm going to pick, oh my gosh, there's so many to choose from. I should have done this before I got on here. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and just choose anything because it doesn't really matter. I'm going to choose this one. Okay. So, and I'm going to make it smaller because that's way too big. So I go over to points and I change it. Okay, well that's, that's better. And now it, it defaults to a word so you can see something. You can actually see the text. So this is just an example. So you can just type on top of this after you, um, Mara checks. Here. Yeah. I think that that's right. So I can't remember, but if it's not, forgive me. Um, so I'm thinking that, oh gosh, it just seems so small, right? So I can go back and I can double click on it. I'd have to just make sure I engage my text tool. I hover my um, cursor over it and then I double click on it. And you'll notice that the text layer over here in the layers panel is also shown dark. That means it's engaged. So I've got this um, here and now I can just go up to here and I can just start playing around with how big I might want it to be. Um, so maybe that's going to work out if I move this little thing here. Okay, so in order to move this little motif without creating a hole in the background, oh, here we go, no, it's not working. Um, without creating a hole in the background, I'm going to have to create a piece of this background color behind this whole diamond shape so that when I move this, nothing looks weird. Okay? Got the you did? What is it? M-A-R-A-C-E-E-K-S. Oh, okay. Oh, just I just, smell. yeah. So I just made one error, so it's not an H, it's a Z. Thank you. Okay, so there's the right spelling for Marichex. Okay, so now um, I've got that text. I just hit escape to get it to stop being engaged with um, the text. I really want to deal with this motif and move it down, though. So I'm going to go down to my original layer. I am going to use my pen tool to select this whole background diamond thing. Actually, no, I'm not going to. I need to make sure that I have this color. So maybe what I do is, because I know I'm going to move this, I'll just create a whole field the size of this color. So let's do that. So I'm going to do layer, new layer. Okay? And I'm going to call it background. Okay? But now it's above my original image. I need it to be behind it because it's the background now. I'm going to push it down and now it's below. So how do I capture this color? It's very easy. I go over here to this tool called the eyedropper tool. This tool will recognize the color of this background if I click on it. You will see it show up down here, okay? So that's the color now that is engaged. That's the color that's gonna be the next color I'm gonna use. And now I'm gonna go to the paint bucket tool. I've got my background engaged and I'm going to click anywhere here because it's happening in the background. Now you'll notice that now the background is this same color. We can't see it unless we turn off all the eyeballs and then we can see it. So now I can go back to my layer. I can zoom in on it, but I want to see. Okay, I'm going to get that little thing. I have to be engaged in this layer. I go to my magic wand and I click I don't want it to be, I want it to be contiguous, though. I don't want all of the gold to get selected. So I have to check that box. And I'm going to click on that. And look, there it is. And I probably want that little dot, too. So if I want that little dot, I just click on it. And so now I've got this whole thing that I can move. And when I move it, it's going to show that it has scissors. This is where putting a background layer in is important. Because if I moved this right now without a background layer, it would be that little checkerboard background, and I'd have to figure out how to fill it in and all of that. I could always go after the fact and create a background layer. That's, this is true. So now I've got it selected. 
and now I can move it down here because I like it. I just, it just wasn't in the right place. So now I'm okay with that. I'm going to go to view fit on screen so I can see kind of where it is in the composition. Now it feels like my text for my mirror text is a little high. So I'm going to just go up to that text. I'm going to choose my move tool and I'm just going to move. Oops, no, that's C. My selection was still engaged. Edit, undo, move. Okay. See, I can't move this right now because this is still engaged. So I have to go up to select, deselect. Now that's done. Now I'm on the text layer. Now I can go to move. And the thing that will be moved is my text. See that? And sometimes it kind of wants to give you like a suggestion for where it should go as far as a center, which is really helpful. But um, sometimes if you feel like it's snapping one way, it's like forcing you to do something. If you just zoom in a little bit, sometimes those guides will go away and it'll give you a little bit more extra room to kind of move things around. So I hope that that was so helpful and that you have some things to play around with that are practical things that you can use in your position as a props master um, on the show. And I think these are just really handy little um, tutorials because it's not just me explaining um, selection tools without any context. It's actually in the context of doing a little project. So enjoy and take a look at the worksheet and I will talk to you all very soon.